I'm Professor Chris Lennard and I run the forensic program here at the University of Canberra. My other area of expertise is detecting finger marks on different surfaces. That's a different task to the person who actually identifies. In terms of fingerprint detection, it means processing different items to develop any finger marks that might be on those items. And once we develop them using, for example, a chemical treatment, we then have to record the finger marks, so take photographs, and then the images that are then handed over to a fingerprint identification expert. Probably someone working in the laboratory using instruments to chemically analyse different types of evidence, so things like paint, glass, textile fibres, gunshot residue, explosive residues, uh, or perhaps also using techniques to develop finger marks on different surfaces. On TV, they have to solve a crime within an hour, so obviously they do things very, very quickly, uh, whereas in practice it can take several days or maybe even weeks to process exhibits. Mm -hmm. So they have to produce results very quickly, and that's not reality. Um, they also have only one case to, to process at one, any given time, whereas in an operational forensic lab you may have 15 to 20 cases that you're trying to juggle at the same time. Sure. And backlogs are, re are a reality in real labs, whereas on TV they have one, one case to process. Uh, also on TV you see a forensic practitioner who does everything themselves. They process the crime scene. They bring evidence back to the lab. They find time to have shootouts and car chases. They interrogate uh, with, uh, suspects. Uh, they then process the exhibits back in the laboratory and produce final reports. Whereas in reality, they're all different jobs. You've got a specialist crime scene examiner. You've got a police investigator that does the interrogation of the, the suspects. The crime scene examiners will hand over exhibits to laboratory-based scientists, whether they be biologists or chemists or document examiners or firearms examiners. Mm -hmm. So in reality, it's a team approach with a number of different specialists in different areas, whereas on TV it tends to be a small number of individuals doing everything, mm -hmm. which, is, which is not correct, obviously. A lot of the types of analyses that are shown on TV are based on real analyses that we can do in the lab, but again, they exaggerate how fast that you can get a result and they also exaggerate how conclusive the results are. Whereas in, in reality, evidence may, may give an indication that something has taken place, whereas on TV they, send, they tend to indicate that it's conclusive, conclusive proof that something has happened. Now on TV, it's the computer that does the identification. They scan the fingerprint in, the computer does a match, you see the two fingerprints superimposed, and they say, yep, that's the person. In reality, you search a database, so here in Australia we have a fingerprint database. All the database does is bring up a list of cl the closest matching fingerprints on the database. And the fingerprint identification expert then has to manually go through all of those fingerprint records and find out if there is one that actually matches the fingerprint found at the crime scene. And it may not necessarily be the person in the top, the top of the list. It could be candidate four or five or maybe even ten on the list. And the the final identification is done by the identification expert, it's not done by the computer. All the computer is used for is to do a quick search of the database and propose the closest matching candidates from the database. If the person who left the finger mark is actually in the database, then you would expect they're going to be high up on the list. But they may not necessarily be in number one position. Like, so the fingerprint identification expert will start at number one. Okay, it's not that person. Go to two, three, keep going down the list. They may stop at number 10 and say, well, this person's not on the database. Normally it's convicted offenders. So if you're convicted of a, of a crime of a certain severity, then your fingerprints can be taken and put on the database. And the same with DNA. On TV, if you get a DNA profile, and it takes a couple of minutes, whereas you'd need 24, 48 hours to, to get a result in the lab. Uh, if, uh, if we have something like an explosive residue and we want to analyse that using a technique that we do have in the lab, gas chromatography, which is a technique they show on TV, 
they do an injection and straight away the instrument gives a printout of all the components of that sample, whereas it, it could take you 40 minutes, an hour, to, to get the results from the analysis and then in, interpret the results and see what it means. Oh, I think there's no doubt that there's a general public interest in forensic science. Uh, that's a good thing, so that you know, there is information out there in terms of what science can provide to help with criminal investigations. I think that's a good thing. And to some extent, it's got people more interested in science, which is also a good thing. Um, however, it does give unrealistic expectations in terms of what forensic science can do. I think we're pretty good, but we're probably not quite as good as they, can, they, they show it on TV. Well, generally it means getting a science qualification, first and foremost. Uh, and that can be just a basic science degree, or it could be a degree such as the one that we run here at UC, and that's an applied science degree, but with a major in forensic chemistry and a major in forensic biology, in our case. And our degree would be suitable for someone who wants to become a laboratory-based forensic scientist. If someone wanted to become a crime scene examiner, again, generally we would recommend a science qualification and possibly a degree where there is some crime scene examination component. Uh, for example, the Canberra Institute of Technology runs a, a course of that type. So the most important aspect is a science qualification first and foremost, and then uh, tailor the course depending on whether you want to become a laboratory-based forensic scientist or a field-based crime scene examiner. It's certainly competitive to get a job. Uh, that's not helped by the interest uh, that's resulted from TV shows such as CSI. Uh, we tell our students that not all of our students are going to get jobs as forensic scientists, uh, and that's the other reason for the program being largely an applied science degree. So you, you end up with a science qualification that may get you a job in the forensic area, but if it doesn't, it will get you into any job where a science qualification is required. Uh, so it is competitive. Uh, there are probably more crime scene examiner positions available than laboratory-based positions. And within the laboratory, there's probably more positions in forensic biology and the forensic chemistry. So it does depend on the area of expertise. There are jobs out there, and if you're good enough, and particularly if you go on and do a higher qualification, then certainly your chances are very good to pick up one of those positions.